Hello, Barry Montessori students. As you know, my name is Miss Mary Lou, and today is Art Day. Uh, boys and girls, for today's piece, you're going to need some black construction paper or poster board. You're going to need some uh, gold or yellow paint. Um, your paint brushes, of course. Uh, what else do we need? We need some chalk. You're going to need some chalk. If you don't have chalk, you can use a white or a lightly colored uh, pencil crayon or crayon. Um, you're going to need some sparkles of some kind. Um, gold would be preferred, but anything you have at home is fine. And some little glue-on gems if you don't have sparkles. And if you don't have either one of those, you could use some uh, foil for this, some strips of tin foil. And I'll show you how to use those once we get started. So, uh, we are going to be working on um, some new pieces this month from our brand new artist. And his name is Gustav Klemt. Um, can you guys say that? Gustav Klemt. So Gustav Klemt was born in Vienna, Austria on July the 14th, 1862. And Gustav Klemt was the uh, second child of seven children in his family. And his family was very poor. They didn't have very much money for things. Um, his father was um, a gold engraver and his mother was a musician. This is a picture of Gustav Klimt with his kitty cat. How many of you have cats at home? I know Miss Bedard has a cat, and I know that Miss Latour has a cat. How many of you have a cat at home? I'm just going to set his picture right here. Um, Gustav Klimt won, um, won a scholarship to um, go to university, and he went to the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. Um, when he graduated, he and his brothers um, went into the business of painting murals, large murals in people's homes, ceilings and walls. And um, eventually Gustav grew kind of tired of that and he decided to go out on his own and he started using canvases to paint instead. Um, once he began painting, he decided that he wanted to create his own movement of art. So he created a group, um, a very small group, and they were called the Vienna Succession. And that group would later, um, would later be known as the creators of a style of painting that was called Art Nouveau. So Gustav's style of Art Nouveau was very colorful. It was colorful, it had lots of curvy lines and shapes, and um, a lot of his work had shiny gold, very similar to what his dad um, worked with when he was a gold engraver. So let's get started on today's piece. Um, first, we're going to start with our piece of black construction paper. And on this, uh, sorry, I've got to tell you the piece. Ah, the piece we're going to be doing is called the Tree of Life. So and it's all around me. That's why I'm thinking that you know what it is. So this is called the Tree of Life. And the Tree of Life was done by Gustav Klemt in 1909. And this uh, particular piece, and Mommy and Daddy can Google it for you and blow it up larger while you're doing your piece if you need it. And um, this piece is on display at the Museum of Applied Arts in Vienna, Austria. So this tree, um, many believe, uh, represents Gustav Klimt's life. Um, so we are going to do a tree that represents our life. So you know, grab your chalk and mommy and daddy may have to do this part for you. So you can talk to mom and dad and and talk with your parents and your grandparents about important things that happened in your life um, so that you will be able to do uh, your tree of life and it will be meaningful for you. So at the bottom of the tree is the trunk. So in this case, I want you to think of the trunk like your parents. So here's your parents, your nice sturdy trunk. From your trunk, um, we're going to start designing how your life will grow. So here we go. Oh look, you're born. And then you learn to drink milk. And then you learn to crawl. Oh, and here's a big branch. This is the branch when you learned how to sleep through the night. And this is the branch where your baby brother was born. And this is the one where your grandma came to visit you for the first time. And, oh, look, here's another one. This is the one where you got your very first puppy. So once you decide all this, 
branches of your life that you want to display, that you want to have in your painting. And I, as I said, you can use a colored uh, crayon for this as well. So your tree is going to look sort of like this. I, this was another example I had. So we have all there. So then we're going to start to paint it in. Sorry, that's what that one was for, was for painting. So I have in here some gold paint and I have some yellow and brown paint as well. Um, the children will remember that we need a pump of uh, soap in our water and a paper towel to blot our brushes with. So we're going to start painting. The easiest way to paint is paint the spirally, curly curves first. Don't paint up the middle. We're going to leave the trunk empty until we get near the end. So start at the curves and paint all the way around. Add more paint as you need it and stop right there. So all your curves, all the way down to your trunk. And then once you get that far, once you get all your curly curlies done, all of the curves of your life and the twists and turns in your life, then and this one I did with yellow, yellow and brown actually, then you're going to join up all those branches. Okay, so we're going to start at the top, not at the bottom. We're going to start at the top and we're going to drag the branches down into the middle of the tree and that will create the trunk for you. That's how your branches will all join into your trunk. And trees are not very symmetrical. They're not exactly the same on both sides. Um, although I can assure you that some of the Casa 3 children will want to have their trees symmetrical on both sides because I, I know some of your children really love their artwork to be very balanced. Okay. Also, when the children are painting their swirls, you're going to see them doing this. Little teeny tiny little ticks, which is fine. Um, but try to encourage them to be really fluid in their mo movement. Try to encourage the hand-eye coordination that's required to do for them to, to do the whole swirl in one big motion um, as opposed to doing little little bits like this. But however it turns out, that's how it turns out and that will be how their tree of life will look. So here's an example of a different tree of life. This is a way that you can, um, another direction, you could turn the paper this way. I cut a large one. Um, um, to go up here a different shape again you can make these whatever size you want if you have poster board that's what I did that one with so once you get it all painted now you're going to gild it by adding that's okay we just had a little avalanche my dog knocked something over um, then we're going to gild it by adding in our gems or our sparkles so I'm going to show you first with the sparkles so if the paint is wet you will have no trouble gilding this so we're going to take our sparkles. The children have all used sparkles before. So we tap, tap, tap the sparkles on, onto the, where the wet paint is. I'm using green so that it'll show up better, but we, um, generally speaking, we would use gold for this. And then um, I've got a bucket here, but you could use a pie plate or anything at all at home, and you're going to knock those um, the extra sparkles off and then you have you have it gilded if you only have the gems then you don't need glue again as long as your paint is wet so you would take your uh, your gems and just stick them right into the paint and they will stick they'll stick onto the paint just like that if you only have the foil then the children can practice their snipping skills and they, I don't have my scissors with me here, but they can snip, 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 or they can snip long skinny strips. And then same thing, you would take your paint and pretend it's your glue. So you take your paint and you would lay, it, lay uh, some paint down so it's nice and wet. And then you would take your your foil and uh, point out to the children too that one side of the foil is very shiny and one side is dull and then you would add it on and then you can go through this piece and um, gild the whole thing find a branch that is important to you for instance maybe you want this gem here because 
that was the day that you lost your first tooth. Um, and maybe you want this piece here because that's the day that you learned how to walk or the day that you went to Disneyland. Um, anyways, I want you to send in your pictures. I'm so excited to see them and send them to Barry Montessori 580 um, at gmail.com. Thank you so much, friends. Take care of each other, and I hope you all keep safe and well until we can all be together again. Bye, friends.